الطيب بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسوله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد تريب إن الله تعالى في start the fourteenth sitting so المجلس الرابع عشر في مفترات الصوم and this is the sitting that is going to concerning the, the things that uh, break the fast so بسم الله we go into the beginning so the first thing Sheikh mentions is Alhamdulillah al-Muttalli wa ala zahir al-Amri wa maqnunihi al-Alim bisir al-Abdi wa jahrihi wa dhununihi al-Mutafarrid bi insha al-Alami wa ibda fununihi al-Mudabbir li kulli minhum fi harakatihi wa sukunihi ahsan ahsan kull shay khalaq وفتق وفتق الأسماء وشق الحدق وأحصى عدد عدد ما في الشجر من ورق في أعواده وغصونه مدى العرض ووضعها وأوسع السماء ورفعها وصير النجوم وأطلعها في هندس الليل ودجونه أنزل القطر وبلا رذاذا فأنقذ به بذر من ال من اليبس من اليبس ومسكن مش كذا من ال من اليبس إنق إنقاذا. so we just stop there. so the Sheikh here, he, he starts with praising Allah, the one who sees the apparent uh, and everything that is hidden. Yeah? So he sees that which is apparent and that which is hidden. Yeah? He is knowledgeable of uh, the secrets of the slave and what he makes apparent and his thoughts. Yeah? And he is the one who, who is, um, is sing, the single out. And he's the one who is singing out as the original of the universe and the decorator of the and, he, and the one who decrees the movements of the cre- uh, creatures and their stillness, idleness. He has perfected everything that he created. He carved the ears and eyes. He encompasses the number of leaves of the trees and their branches. He stretched out the earth and stabilized it. He expanded the sky and raised it up. He makes the stars move and exposes them in the darkness of the night. And he sent down the rain from the sky pouring and drizzling. And he protects with it the seeds from dehydration. So then the Shaykh mentions the Quran uh, ayah. هَذَا خَلْقُ اللَّهِ فَعَارُونِي مَاذَا خَلَقَ الَّذِينَ مِن دُونِهِ Surah Luqman, verse 11. Which he basically means that... Um, this is the so he said here this is the creation of Allah right here and uh, show me so what he said is this is the creation of Allah uh, so show me the creation of those who they worship besides him and what they have created here so Ahmaduhu ala judihi wa ihsanihi wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu fi uluhiyatihi wa sultanihi wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu al muayyadu bi burhanihi sallallahu alayhi wa ala wa ala sahibihi abi bakr fi jami'i sha'nihi wa la umr muqliqi qisra fi iwanihi وَأَلَى أُثْمَانَ سَاحِرَ اللَّيْلِهِ فِي قُرْآنِهِ وَأَلَى أَلِي قَالِ بَابِ خَيْبَرْ مُزَلْزِلْ خُصُونِهِ وَلَى آلِهِ وَأَصْحَابِهِ أَلَّا مُجْتَحِدْ كُلُّ مِنْهُمْ فِي طَاعَةِ رَبِّهِ فِي حرك في هَرَكَتِهِ وَسُكُونِهِ وَسَلَّمْ تَسْلِيمًا So then the Shaykh continues with this introduction uh, which is Basically saying that I thank him, Allah, for his generosity and kindness 
and I also bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped in truth uh, except Allah alone without a partner um, and uh, he is unique in his right to be worshipped and nor in his uh, sovereignty and I also bear witness that Muhammad is uh, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, is his slave and messenger the one who is supported with proofs from Allah peace be upon him his companion Abu Bakr in all his affairs and Umar the one who terrified the Persian king Kisra uh, in his uh, palace and Uthman the one who revived his uh, knight in recitation of the Quran and Ali the one who exterminated the, uh, the door of Khaybar and shook its fortress upon his family and his companions and those who strive hard to be obedient to uh, their Lord in their movements and in their state of stillness so then the Shaykh begins Ikhwani my brothers قال الله تعالى فالآن باشروهن وابتغوا ما كتب الله لكم وكلوا واشربوا حتى يتبين لكم الخيط الأبيض أبيض من الخيط الأسود من الفجر ثم أتم الصيام إلى الليل. so here this is uh, the ayah of surah Baqarah where the sheikh is mentioning now we're talking about uh, the topic is about those things that break from fast. So keeping them, that in mind, the Sheikh begins with the speech of Allah the Most High, where he says, so now have relations, meaning with your wives, and seek that which Allah has ordained for you from offspring. And eat and drink until the white thread, light of dawn appears to you, distinct from the black thread, darkness of night. Then complete your fast till the nightfall. So meaning that Obviously, relations with one spouse is forbidden and eating and drinking forbidden during the day. But after when you're, you've opened your fast, you can, you know, uh, enjoy those relations and you can uh, eat and drink until, uh, you know, uh, the so, uh, the time of suhoor, uh, the time of fajr. So then the Sheikh mentioned, ذكر الله في هذه الآية الكريمة. So Allah mentioned in this uh, noble ayah. أصول المفطرات الصوم وذكر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في سنة تمام ذلك. so the sheikh mentions that he mentions the origins of the foundations of the of the of the things that uh, break one's fast and, and in this ayah and he mentioned the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم also mentioned in his sunnah yeah, uh, the completion of this uh, things that break one's uh, fast. So then the Sheikh says, Al Mufatiratu Sabatu Anwa. So the things that nullify or break one's fast are seven types. So he's going to grow into them now. So the first uh, category is Al Awal Al Jama Al Jamau Wahua Al Ilaju Dakari Fil Farj Wahua Adamuha Wa Akbaruha Ithman. So the first type is having sexual relations with one's wife, and that is inserting the male part of a person's uh, sexual organ into the female part's uh, sexual organ and that is the greatest of the major sins uh, and uh, yeah so for matter uh, so when you're fasting obviously if you're not fasting it's not as it's permissible so for matter jami al-sa'im batala bi so me he further can o naflan so then the sheikh mentions that when uh, so when a person he uh, has sexual relations with his wife and he's fasting, his uh, fast is all is uh, basically nullified. Yeah, so it's nullified, and uh, he uh, whether that is a, a wajib like in Ramadan, so that's obligatory, or it's uh, not obligatory, superocratory. Um, so you need optional fast. ثم إن كان في نحار رمضان والصوم واجب عليه لازمه ما قضاء الكفارة المغلظة وحية إتق رقبة مؤمنة فإن لم يجد فصيام شهرين متتابعين لا يفطر بينهما إلا لأذر شرعي كأيام الإيدين وتشريق أو لأذر هسي كالمرضي والصفر لغير قصد الفطر. 
So then, فإن أفطر لغير أذر ولو يوم يوم واحدا لازمه استئناف الصيام من جديد ليحصل التتابع فإن لم يستطع صيام شهرين متتابعين فإتعام ستين مسكينا لكل مسكين نصف كيلو وعشرة غرامات من البر الجيد. So then we we'll stop there and we'll continue uh, with the uh, explain that. So uh, the Sheikh here he mentions that whenever uh, so he mentioned so if it was in the day that uh, of Ramadan, yeah. So if it's in the day of Ramadan and he uh, had relations uh, with his wife and when the song is wajib obligatory upon him. Then is uh, he's required to make up uh, the fast as well as make a recompense. And what is the recompense? It is to first of all is to free a believing slave, a Muslim, a slave, someone who's in slavery. You to free them. Yeah. Uh, and if you are not, if you do not find someone who's a slave or a believer, like in our days, we might not find that. Uh, then is the person has to fast for two months consecutively, and he cannot break uh, break you know take a day off between them. So it means every single day is fasting, and he's obviously opening his fast every day. So it's not a continuous not uh, fasting without uh, even breaking his fast. No, every day is like uh, he fa fasts Fajr time and he breaks at Maghrib, and he does that for two months consecutively. Except he doesn't make a have a a gap in between that, except for a, a, a an excuse that is legislated in the Sharia, yeah, uh, like the two days of Eid, because you know the there's a hadith of Rasul that no, uh, only uh, no fast Eid except the devil, yeah. So uh, and that uh, the, the the days of the Shariq, yeah, the days of uh, eating after um, after Eid al Adha, you know the 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 days of the Shariq, you don't eat them days as well. There's about four days there, uh, and so uh, or for another reason, for example, like he's sick, so he can't fast them days. That that's an excuse. Or he's traveling, or uh, so yeah, and he's basically he doesn't wanna, and his travel is not because he wants to, you know, uh, take a break. So he thinks, oh, I'm gonna travel now, so I can take a break from this fasting. No. Uh, and then, if he did uh, did break uh, his uh, fast for whatever reason that is older than the legislature is excuses in the Sharia, even if it's one day. So if he's got them two months that he's got to make up that he has a relations with his wife, he's got to make them two day, two months up. And he's made, for example, thirty days, and he's taken one day off, then he has to start again from scratch. He's got to start again the days uh, or two months again until they are consecutive without her. A gap in between, in between, and if he's not able to do that first two months on the uh, consecutively, uh, then he needs to do is uh, he needs to feed sixty uh, poor people. So he needs to pee, pee, uh, feed them uh, uh, sixty poor people, and that is equivalent to half a kilo and uh, ten grams of uh, of wheat. Uh, in, uh, then in Sheikh Ben Zawa, fi sahi Muslim, and a Rajalun waka bi imraatihi fi Ramadana, fa istafta and Nabisa Asam, and Dari Fakala, hal tajidu rakabatan, kala la, kala, hal testati siyama shahrain, yani mutatabi in kama fi riwayat al Ukra, kala la, kala fa atim sitina miskinan, wa hua fi sahi hain. Uh, yeah. So uh, here the Sheikh he mentions uh, that the proof for this, what we mentioned, is in mentioned in the Sahih Muslim, that, uh, so it's a Sahih Hadith, that a man that he, from the Sahaba, he fell into that. He had relations with his wife. Yeah. So he had relations uh, with his wife, and uh, so he came to the Prophet. So the, uh, the Prophet. Uh, he asked the, the Prophet ﷺ for uh, in relation, a ruling regarding that. So the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, "Can you find a slave?" Uh, he said, "No." 
He said, are you able to fast two months, meaning two months consecutively, as mentioned in other narrations? Uh, he said, no. So the Prophet ﷺ said, feed 16 people. Yeah, so six, 60, sorry, 60 people, yeah, 60 people. And uh, that is in the Bukhari and uh, Muslim. So here, that is mentioned in Bukhari and Muslim. So then, um, and that is uh, uh, comprehensively mentioned in there, yeah. And then, then the second category, so that was the first category, the one who falls into uh, having relations uh, during the day in uh, when he's fasting. The second is, إِنزَالُ الْمَنِي بِإِخْتِيَارِهِ بِتَقْبِيلِ أَوْ لَمْسٍ أَوْ إِسْتِمْنَاءٍ أَوْ نَحْوُ ذَلِكَ لِأَنَّ هَذَا مِنَ الشَّحْوَةِ الَّتِي لَا يَكُونُ الصَّوْمُ إِلَّا بِإِ استنابها كما جاء في حديث القدس يدع طعامه وشرابه وشحوته من أجلي. so here uh, the second category is uh, ejaculating for a man, you know, for a woman as well. Uh, uh, so the with the semen coming out and that is by him choosing to do so uh, either by kissing his wife uh, or by touching her uh, or by actually masturbating, so whether it's a man or a woman, that that is nullifies the uh, fast. So and uh, anything according uh, going along with that, because uh, this is from desire, and your your fast is not accepted except by staying away from the likes of this. Which and this is according and the proof for that is the hadith qudsi. And we mentioned hadith qudsi is the wording is from Allah. Allah's addressing uh, uh, the the believers. So Allah mentions uh, in the hadith that he, he means a slave, leaves his food and his drink and his de desires uh, for my sake. So he leaves these things for my sake. So uh, and that is Rawahu uh, al-Bukhari. And that's mentioned in uh, Sahih Bukhari. So it shows that it's uh, the most authentic form of hadith. So then the Shaykh, he says, فَأَمَّا تَقْبِيلُ وَتَقْبِيلُ وَالْلَمْسِ بِدُونِ إِنزَالِ فَلَا يُفَتِّرُ لِمَا فِي أَسْحِيهَيْنِ مِنْ حَدِيثِ آئِشَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا أَنَّ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ كَانَ يُقَبِّلُ وَهُوَ سَائِمْ وَيُبَاشِرْ وَهُوَ سَائِمْ وَلَكِنَّهُ كَانَ أَمْلَكَكُمْ لِإِرْبِهِ So that uh, the Shaykh, he says uh, that as for kissing and uh, one's wife and you know uh, feeling one's wife and following one's wife without you know that causing ejaculation then that doesn't break one's fast and that's according to what's in the two Sahih uh, Bukhari and Muslim uh, from the hadith of the mother of the believers Aisha may Allah be pleased with her that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he used to kiss uh, his wife so Aisha is narrating that she used to kiss his wives and he while he was fasting and used to have relations uh, uh, so he used to basically play with them not not have uh, sexual relations but play, uh, play with them and while he was fasting and uh, but he because, but he was more uh, in control of him is uh, himself uh, than anyone of us so he had a more strong control over himself uh, than anyone one of his needs than anyone of the rest of the humankind. So, so what we see, Sahih Muslim, and Umar bin Abi Salama Sala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a yukabilu asaim, Fakal Nabi, Sal Hadi Yani, Um Salama, Fakbaratu, and Nabi Sasam Kana, Yasna Udalik, Fakal Nabi, Ama Wallahi. Uh, أما والله إني uh, لا لا أتقاكم لله وأخشاكم له. so uh, so then he, the sheikh mentions the proof also in a Sahih Muslim uh, that uh, Umar bin Abi Salama uh, you know uh, he asked the Prophet uh, uh, you know is it permissible for the fasting person to kiss you know, his wife? so the Prophet asked asked this one because it was his mom. He was married to the Prophet uh, was married to his mom. So he asked Um Salama and then his mom informed him that yeah the Prophet 
he used to kiss his wives, uh, her, meaning her. And the, uh, so the Prophet ﷺ then carried on. He said, I, uh, I am the most God-fearing of Allah uh, from amongst you. And he, he used to kiss his wife. So showing that it's permissible uh, to do that. لكن إن كان الصائم يخشى على نفسه من الإنزال بتقبيل ونحو ونحوه أو من التدد من التدد من من التدد سوري ما تنسد من التدرج بذلك إلى جماع لأدم قوته على كبه شحوته فإن التقبيل ونحوه يحرم حين إذن سدًا لذريعة وصونًا لسيامه عن الفساد ولذلك أمر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم المتودع لمبالغة بالمبالغة في الاستنشاق إلا أن يكون صائمًا خوفًا من من التسرب الماء إلى جوفه So then here the sheikh uh, he explains it further he goes yes it's permissible but if the fasting person fears for himself that you know he might ejaculate by you know having that you know uh, kissing his wife or following his wife or it might you know uh, it might lead you know it, it might be progress to somewhat more for example you can't control your diet or desires you used to begin with kissing your wife and then it progresses further in, until someone has uh, relations with his wife because he doesn't have the 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 self control yeah to hold back yeah to control his desires uh then this uh, kissing his wife or following his wife then it becomes haram because uh that is uh you know something that uh blocks the the means to something haram becomes haram yeah so it's in a way to protect you from falling into harm uh haram so uh so if you if you can and then also to safeguard your fast uh from corruption and for that reason the prophet sallam he mentioned in another narration that to the one who's making wudu that he uh you know he uh become you know try to reach make the water reach as far back as his nose as possible when he's making wudu um when you pour, you know you you are doing rinsing your mouth and you're inhaling uh, water to make it reach as far as possible except if you're fasting for fearing that some of the water might enter into your uh, inner self yeah into your abdomen into so uh, that shows you that uh, something you know that you fear something you 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 stay away from it so even in making wudu you don't sniff that much water uh, excessively the norm, the way you would normally do so then the, that's the point. So then the Sheikh mentions وَأَمَّا الْإِنزَالْ بِالْإِحْتِلَامِ وَالْتَفْكِيرَ الْمُجَرَّدِ أَنَ الْعَمَلِ فَلَا يُفَتِّرْ لِأَنَّ الْإِحْتِلَامِ غَيْرِ إِحْتِيَارِ السَّائِمِ وَأَمَّا التَّفْكِيرُ فَمَعْفُوٌ عَنْهُ لِقَوْلِ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَجَاوَزْ تَجَاوَزَ عَنْ أُمَّتِي مَا حَدَثَتْ بِهِ أَنفُسُهَا مَا لَمْ تَعْمَلْ أَوْ تتكلم متفق عليه. so then the sheikh he mentions uh, that uh, as for ejaculation due to a wet dream or just by merely thinking about some uh, without actually you you know masturbating or going to your wife or doing anything to cause that to happen uh, then uh, then then the uh, then that's okay. That doesn't break one uh, fast because a wet dream is not out of one's choice. He didn't actually do that by choice, yeah, uh, and that just happened. But as for uh, thinking about some of then he's forgiven, forgiven about that as well, according to the statement of the Hadith of the Prophet Sallam, that the Prophet Sallam, Allah accepted my invocation to forgive whatever whispers in the hearts of my followers, unless they put it into action or utter it. So just merely thinking about an evil thing, indeed, uh, doing an evil thing, it, you don't get, so you're not held accountable for that, but actually putting it into practice, putting it into action, that's what you're accountable for. So that's uh, agreed, meaning Bukhari Muslim is mentioned. So that was the second type, that is ejaculation. Yeah? So what dream, 
and you know just having many thoughts and that's causing that that doesn't nullify his own fast but actually uh, anything else that you do on purpose at least uh, that whether it's even kissing your wife or fondling or even you know doing anything other than that then yeah that breaks the fast then the third type الثالث الاكل او الشرب وهو ايصال الطعام والشراب الى الجوف من طريق الفم او الانف ايا كان نوع المأكول أو مشروب لقوله تعالى وكلوا واشربوا حتى يتبين لكم الخيط خيط العبيد من الخيط الأسود من الفجر ثم أتم الصيام إلى إلى الليل سو بخرة سو هي the, we read that ayah before as well so the sheikh mentioned the third category is uh, obviously drinking eating and drinking which we all know so eating and drinking uh, it breaks one's fast Obviously, the exception to that is what if you unintentionally you forgot and you you ate, and then there's a narration that Allah has you know fed you and you know uh, and that's uh, you know obviously you know held accountable for that. But here we're talking about intentionally eating and drinking. So here and eating and drinking is what is the reaching of the food and the drink to your inside, you know, into your um, abdomen uh, by eat, by way of even your mouth or by your nose by inhaling. Yeah. So whether that's food or drink, and that's according to the speech of Allah, what we mentioned before, uh, he said, uh, eat and drink until the white thread light of dawn appears to you, distinct from the black thread, meaning at the time of Fajr, then complete your fast uh, till the nightfall. Yeah. That's Surah Baqarah was 187. <laughs> والشرب لقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في حديث لقيت من لقيت ابن صبرة وبالغ وبالغ في الاستنشاق إلا أن تكون صائما رواه الخمس خمسة وصحه الترمذي فأما الشم الروائع فلا يفتر لأنه ليس للرائحة جر جرم جرم يدخل يدخل إلى الجوف. So here the Sheikh mentions and also for inhaling through the nose is like eating and drinking. And it's according to the hadith that we mentioned before that you know that you know sniff up inhale a lot of water into your nose you know except in if you're fasting. And that's mentioned by the five, uh, you know, narrators of hadith and uh, and uh, At-Tirmadhi, Grady, Sahih. And then the Sheikh, he says, and for smelling, you know, fragrance, a smell, then that doesn't break your uh, fast. Because a smell, it doesn't enter into the one's abdomen or stomach. And it, uh, there's some rulings about um, some incense, particular incense, uh, Ud or Bakhur, you know, where it does go into, uh, you know, uh, into oneself, and it, some some of the scholars mentioned that it's uh, not permissible. So it's uh, Ud, yeah. It, it, some of them said that it's not permissible for burning incense to the. But other than that, if you smell perfume or anything, that that's okay, um, and that doesn't break one's smell uh, uh, fast. Sorry, and then uh, our, the fourth category is. ما كان بمعنى الأكل والشرب وهو وهو شيئان أحدهما حقن الدم في السائم مثل أن يصاب بنظيف فيحقن في دم فيفتر بذلك لأن الدم هو غاية الغذاء بالطعام والشراب وهو حصل ذلك بحقن الدم فيه so here uh, the sheikh he's mentioning now that uh, the fourth type is uh, that which uh, it resembles eating and drinking and there's two types so he mentions the first type and he says that is an injection of blood or blood uh, we say blood, blood blood transfusion you know for the fasting person yeah for for example he is afflicted with uh, you know something uh and then he's uh he's afflicted with something uh and therefore he's uh he gets a blood transfusion 
and that will break his fast. So that would break his fast because uh, uh, the blood is a, a nourishment uh, and the goal of the blood is the nourishment. Yeah, uh, and that's what the food and the drink, it makes the blood. Uh, and that, that has been achieved with this uh, blood transfusion that's taken place. So that's one of the one of the types of uh, of of uh, of this. Uh, uh, so yeah, so if a person is bleeding and he needs blood transfusion, then yeah, then this uh, breaks his fast. Then the second type, he said, Shaytani al ibru al mughadiya al mughadiya tulati yuktafa biha al al akl wa shurb. فَإِذَا تَنَاوَلَهَا أَفْتَرَ لِأَنَّهَا وَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُنْ أَكْلًا وَشُرْمًا حَقِيقَةً فإن فَإِنَّهَا بِمَعْنَاهُمَا فَثَبَتَ لَهَا حُكْمُهُمَا فَأَمَّ الْإِبْرُ غَيْرَ الْمُغَذِّيَّ فَإِنَّهَا غَيْرُ مُفَتِّرَةٍ سواء تناولها عن طريق الأدلات أو عن طريق الأروق حتى ولو وجد حرارتها في حلقه فإنها لا تفطر لأنه لأنها ليست أكلا ولا شربا ولا بمعناهما فلا يثبت لها حكمهما ولا إبرة بوجود الطعام في حلق في غير الأكل والشرب ولذا قال فقهاؤنا لو لطخ بات قدمه بحنظل فوجد تعمه في حلقه لم يفطر. So then we stop there and we'll translate that. So then the Sheikh mentions also uh, is like a needle of a nourishment, bag of nourishment. So for example, like a saline or something uh, like a vitamin uh, or uh, a bag of uh, you know some nourishment that you attach uh, to yourself, and that suffices you from eating and drinking, uh, and because in that you then that person has broken his fast. For example, a vitamin bag, you know, like, or something else, you know, uh, that you can find nowadays. Uh, because even if it's not uh, eating or drinking, in reality, it, it is in the terms of its meaning, you know, because you are getting that nourishment. Uh, and then the uh, ruling has been established. But as for a bag, for example, uh, that is uh, that is not a nourishment for the body. For example, it might be some medication that you need to get in there uh, that doesn't give your body any nourishment. Then that is uh, it doesn't uh, break your uh, wounds fast. Whether a person takes it on the way from the, in the injecting in the muscles or in the veins, uh, uh, even if he finds the heat in his throat because of the medication or whatever, it, it doesn't break his uh, fast because he is not uh, eating or drinking, and not uh, not and it's not you know equi equi um, equivalent to that in meaning. It doesn't give your body nourishment, so it's not been established. That it has that ruling to break your fast, but and there uh, and there's no uh, you know we don't take uh, as a proof uh, that you know you can taste uh, something you know like have a taste in your throat uh, um, if if it's other than food and drink. So even if it's medicine and you you have like a sense of sensation or tra taste in your throat, then that's not a proof that your fast is broken, uh, and that's why the scholars uh, uh, of fiqh have said. That uh, if a person were to, you know, stamp on, uh, it's like a, the people in the Middle East and the a Asia use this. It's like a type of a melon, but it's smaller, and they stamp on it with their feet, and it's called hanzal, uh, and then they find, you know, in the air, there's a type of a taste in the, that goes into their th throat when they're doing that. Uh, even that doesn't, uh, it doesn't break your fast. Then, uh, Sheikh al Islam, they're going to mention now Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. So he has some speech on this. So Sheikh al-Islam, let me see here. Um, so here the Sheikh, uh, one second. 
So then uh, Sheikh al-Islam, he mentioned Qala Sheikh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahmullah, Fi Risala, Haqiqat al-Siyam, Laysa fi al-Adilla, Ma yaqtadi an, An al-Muhfattir, Al-Ladhi ja'alahu Allah, Wa Rasulahu Muhfattiran, Huwa ma kana wasilan ila, Dimaq au badan, Au ma kana dakhilan min, Manfad au wasilan ila jawf, Wa nahu thalik min al-Ma'ani, التي يجعلها أصحاب هذه الأقاويل في منات الحكم عند الله ورسوله قال وإذا لم يكن دليل على تعليق, تعليق الله ورسوله الحكم على هذا الوصف كان يقول القال إن الله ورسوله, ورسوله, إن الله ورسوله إنما جعل هذا مفترا لهذا قول قول بلا علم انتهى كلامه رحمه الله. So then the Sheikh he mentions that Ibn Taymiyyah he mentioned in regards to this uh, uh, in the letter entitled uh, uh, the realities of fast uh, of uh, fasting. There is no proof which indicates that Allah and His Messenger have made the nullifiers or the fast anything which reaches the brain or the body goes through the body or reaches the stomach as people presume yeah so some people think that just because it enters it reaches the brain or the body or you know different parts of the body that it breaks the fast or nullifies the fast uh, so so then uh, the sheikh ikari zoni says um, due to them thinking that Anulfiya of the fast is everything that uh, shares these, you know, characteristics. He said, and if Allah and His Messenger did not make the uh, ruling that this make breaks the fast, connected with these meanings, then the statement of those who say Allah and His Messenger made this thing as a nullifier of fasting due to such and such of a reason is merely speaking without any knowledge. So he said, so that basically means that anything that just enters the body. Uh, some people scholars said that all oh, that breaks the fast. No, he said that uh, the Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah, he, uh, he mentioned that this is not a condition. Just because it enters the body, it doesn't mean that it's broken the fast. So then uh, the fifth category, uh, so the fourth category was uh, nourishment, yeah, uh, nutrition that's gained either a blood transfusion or uh, you know you put, get some nutrition through by way of IV or, or something. Uh, 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 you know, going uh, according to that, or either through your mouth or nose. And the fifth, the fifth category is ikhraj al-dam bil hijama. The Quran of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after al-hajim wal-mahjum. Rawahu Ahmad wa Abu Dawood. Wa min hadith al-shaddad al-shaddad ibn Aws. قال البخاري ليس في في الباب الصح منه وهذا مذهب الإمام أحمد وأكثر فقهاء الحديث وفي معنى إخراج الدم بال hijama. وعلى هذا فلا يجوز الإسائم سوما واجبا أن يتبرأ بإخراج تمه الكثير الذي يؤثر على البدن تأثير الحجامة إلا أن أن يوجد مضطر مضطر له لا تندفع ضرورته إلا به ولا درر على السائم بسحب الدم منه فيجوز للضرورة ويفطر ذلك اليوم ويقضي وأما خروج الدم من رؤافي أو السؤال أو الباسور أو قل السن أو شق الجرح أو تحليل الدم أو غرز الإبرة ونحوها فلا ولا يفطر لأنه ليس بهجامة ولا بمعناها إذا لا يؤثر في في البدن كتأثير الحجامة. So this one is the fifth category, and there's actually uh, some speech I want to add on to this, uh, you know, from other scholars as well. But this uh, the Sheikh is mentioning that hijama, which is cupping, yeah, and uh, is to extract the blood by way of cupping the body, that it breaks the fast, and he's saying that the one who uh, who performs uh, hijama and the one who receives hijama, the the uh, the fast is broken and is mentioned in hadith by Imam Ahmad, Abu Dawood, and uh, from the companion Shaddad bin Aus 
and uh, Bukhari mentioned that there is uh, this is the most authentic hadith in this regard into this uh, this topic, uh, and uh, this is the madhab of Imam Ahmad and many of the fuqaha, uh, and then the Sheikh mentions the meaning of this is that uh, the removing of the do- uh, the blood by way of hijama uh, is not permissible for the fasting person. Uh, 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 when he's fasting, an uh, obligatory fast, and that he should uh, take out uh, his uh, blood, uh, a lot of blood, uh, because this has an effect on his body, and he'll, uh, he, under the, this hijama, cupping, uh, he shouldn't do it except if he's for compelled uh, because of a you know sickness or uh, you know he needs it, then there's no harm in him doing that, uh, and then breaking his fast. And then making up uh, the fast uh, uh, another day. Uh, uh, but, but, but as for uh, taking out, uh, you know, blood coming out, uh, then he goes into the different types of uh, blood uh, coming out. For example, uh, nosebleed, you know, or uh, he's coughing and he coughs up blood, or he's uh, got hemorrhoids from a back passage, you know, it comes out, or he, the extraction of a tooth. The blood that comes out, or uh, he's you know he's uh, injured, he's got uh, a wound that he's been injured, and blood's coming out, or you know he's do, got to uh, give blood to for do a blood analysis, or uh, you know he's got a prick of a needle, uh, you know to take out some blood. So all these don't break or break the fast, because this is not like the uh, hijama, and it's not equivalent to hijama where it has a really effect on your body. But I want you to mention on a side point. That the scholars differ of this. Obviously, this is Sheikh uh, uh, Salih Uthaymeen, Rahmullah's opinion. But there is also the opinion of, like Sheikh Albani mentions, and all the scholars have mentioned, that there's a, this hadith was abrogated by another hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that the Prophet had himself cooked whilst in a state of ihram and while he was fasting. And that is also mentioned in Sahih Bukhari. So it's an authentic hadith. So what, what the scholars have you know combined with that is that as long as it's not make you weak and it doesn't have effect, you can do that. So that's one of the things that the scholars differ upon. So Wallahu A'lam. So I hold that to be stronger that you can do that as long as you can cope with that fasting. Yeah. So and, uh, Allah knows best. And then uh, the sixth category is At-Taqayyu. أمدن وهو إخراج ما في المائدة من الطعام أو الشراب عن طريق الفم يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من ضره القيء فليس عليه قضاء ومن استقاء أمدا فليقضي رواه الخمسة إلا النساء وصحه الحاكم ومعنى ذره غلب ويفتر إذا تعمد القيء إما بالفعل كلا قل عصر بطنه أو غمز حلقه أو بشم مثل أن يشم شيئا ليقيئ به أو بالنظر كأن يتعمد النظر إلى شيء ليقيئ به فيفتر بذلك كله أما إذا حصل القيء بدون سبب منه فإنه لا يضر وإذا راجت مائدته لم يلزمه من منع القيء لأن ذلك يضره ولكن يتركه فلا يحاول القيء ولا منعه. So the sixth one, the sixth of these uh, type of category uh, that we're going through here is uh, let's go through that. The sixth one is uh, vomiting, and that is vomiting intentionally. So when you try to vomit intentionally, so this is uh, forbidden. Yeah. So this is forbidden to. Uh, I, so it breaks one's fast, and that is uh, to take out what is in the stomach from food or drink by uh, by way of the mouth, and that is according to the Prophet Some you know whoever uh, does that intentionally, uh, you know alayhi uh, waman So whoever vomits. Uh, unintentionally, then he didn't have to make. Uh, then he didn't have to make a fa- uh, fast, and he, his fast is uh, uh, okay. So he doesn't break his fast. The one who uh, just vomits without, you know, uh, intentionally doing it. But the one who 
uh, does it intentionally, then he uh, his fast is broken and he has to make up the fast. And that was mentioned by the five uh, hadith narrators, except for Nisa'i and Al Hakim, uh, Grady Isahi. Uh, so the, the, the meaning of that hadith is that the one who uh, he basically breaks his fast if he intentionally uh, vomits. Uh, so basically, you know, by uh, intentionally trying to uh, squeeze his stomach uh, or, you know, pushing it through his, uh, putting, uh, you know, his fingers in his throat or uh, by smelling something uh, that will cause him to vomit. As you can remember, you you have that gag reflex when you smell something foul. So maybe you do it on purpose, try to smell something or looking at something, you know, that's disgusting uh, that, you know, that will cause you to uh, vomit, so he does that on purpose so that he can vomit. Uh, so all that uh, it breaks wood fast, and he has to make up the fast. But if you uh, vomit without, you know, uh, intending that, and it's just something you come across accidentally, a smell, uh, you know, seen someone in, unintentionally, and it's happened, then it doesn't break your fast and it doesn't harm you. But if the, uh, you know, if you're about to uh, vomit and then it's circling around your stomach. And uh, it's not, you know, abiding upon you that you prevent it from coming out. So a lot of people, when they think about feel like they try to hold it down. So no, no, that will harm you. So it will harm you. So you, uh, you can let it out and it, will, and it will not harm your fast. So uh, there's no harm in that. Whether you vomit unintentionally, it doesn't break your fast. But vomiting intentionally, it breaks your fast. So that was the sixth type. And the seventh category is خروج الدم الحيدة والنفسي يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في المرأة أليس إذا حادت لم تصلي ولم تصب فمتى رأت دم الحيد أو النفاس فسد سوها سواء في أول النهار أو في آخره ولو قبل غروب بلحظة بلحظة وإن أخ وإن أحست بانتقال الدم ولم يبرز إلا بعد الغروب فصومه فصومها صحيح. so here uh, the sheikh mentioning uh, uh, another thing that breaks uh, the fast obviously is for the women. obviously we don't have any men who experience menstruation and uh, uh, you know childbirth after the postpartum bleeding, uh, postpartum uh, bleeding, uh, you know after childbirth the bleeding. so these break uh, the fast. So, uh, and according to the Prophet uh, speech, uh, uh, the, uh, a woman, if she experiences, uh, uh, you know, uh, menstruation, she doesn't pray and she doesn't fast. And whenever she sees uh, the blood of menstruation or postpartum bleeding, then her uh, fast has been notified, whether it's uh, in the beginning of the day or in the end of the day, even if it's um, before the sunset, before Maghrib, by a few moments, and if she and if she feels something of a, you know of blood uh, that's coming out, but uh, but uh, but it, it doesn't come out except after uh, her fast, then that fast is correct. So as long as she doesn't see the blood, uh, you know her fast is correct. Um, تناول هذه المفطرات إن كان صومه واجب كصوم رمضان والكفارة والنذر إلا أن يكون له أذر يبيه الفطرة كصفر أو مرض ونحوهما لأن من تلبس بواجب لازمه إتمامه إلا لأذر صحي ثم إن 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 من تناول تناولها في نهار رمضان لغير أذر وجب عليه الإمساك من بقية اليوم وقضاء وإلا لزمه القضاء دون الإمساك أما إن كان صومه تتوعا فإنه يجوز الفطر ولو بدون أذر لكن الأولى الإتمام صحيح the Sheikh he mentions that uh, that is forbidden for a fasting person 
observing of obligatory fast like in the Ramadan to fall into any of these aforementioned nullifiers. An example, uh, so including the, uh, this includes of uh, fast the month of Ramadan. So fasting to uh, fulfill a penalty and fasting to fulfill a vow with Allah. So you can either fast, remember them two months consecutively. So all these nullifiers apply to them fast as well. And if it applies also uh, when you, uh, for example, you made the oath with Allah, I'm going to fast so much, so much days, uh, then you still, these these things also break that fast as well. Uh, except, so if he is, so one person will not make a break his fast, except if he has a shari'i excuse, yeah, allowing him to do so, such as traveling, yeah, so you can't uh, fast because of that. So you don't make the reason that you're, fast, you're, you're going to break your fast uh, is traveling. So you don't say, oh, I'm going to travel, so I don't have to fast. Some people do that. And I've come across some of the Shia coming out with the towers. If you don't want to fast, travel the whole month of Ramadan. Allah guide us and them. I mean. So uh, no, uh, so you can, if you're traveling, you don't need to fast. Uh, or if you're sick, that's because, you know, whoever uh, starts an obligation must complete it. Except if he has a valid excuse, then the Sheikh says, "Ikhwani, hafidu ala taat wa janibu al maasi wal muharramat wa ibtahalu ila fatir al ardi wa samawat wa taarradu li nufahati judihi fa innu jazizu al wa innu jazilu al habat wa wa alamu annu leisa lakum min dunya kum illa ma." أم ديتموه في طاعة مولاكم فلا فلا غنيمة الغنيمة غنيمة قبل فوات الأوان والمرا والمر والمرابحة والمرابحة قبل خلول الخسران. so then the sheikh he said oh my dear brothers uh, preserve uh, your uh, you know safeguard and preserve the righteous acts of obedience and you know stay away from uh, uh, disobedience and uh, things that are haram made, uh, you know, haram for you, uh, and uh, make dua, you know, supplicate uh, to the original of the heavens and the earth, and hasten towards his bounties, for verily he is, uh, he gives abundantly, and know that all you have in this world is whatever you have spent in the be- in the obedience of your Lord. Therefore, uh, rush to um, the treasure, rush to the treasures, and uh, rush to the treasure before it's too late. So take a uh, take a benefit while, while you can, and take a uh, uh, rush to the uh, great gain. Rush to the great gain before the arrival of loss. So then uh, the Sheikh he finishes with the dua: Allahumma wafiqna al li iktinam al awqat wa washq wa 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 shqulih wa shq wa shqulihha. بالأعمال الصالحات اللهم جد علينا بالفضل والإحسان وأعمالنا بالعفو والغفران اللهم يسرنا ليسرى وجنبنا الأسرى واغفر لنا في الآخرة والأولى اللهم ارزقنا شفاعة نبينا وأوردنا حوده وأسقنا منه شربة لا 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 نظمع لا نظمع بعدها أبدا يا رب يا رب رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ونبيك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. so there the sheikh mentions Allah grant us success to benefit from our time keep it busy with good deeds. O Allah give us from your bounty and generosity and deal with us with pardoning. And forgiveness, O oh Allah, grant us ease in all our affairs and keep us far from hardship. And forgive us the previous and latter sins that uh, we have committed. O oh Allah, we ask you to uh, provide us with uh, the intercession of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and allow us to uh, come and drink from his haud, his fountain and uh, spring yeah, uh, or pond and give us a drink from it that uh, will keep us, uh, you know, uh, hydrated forever. And we will never, you know, experience uh, thirst after that. We, we ask you, oh Lord, 
of the worlds. And then uh, he mentioned at the end, oh Allah blesses and send the peace and blessings upon uh, your slave, your prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his family uh, members and all his companions. And with that, we finish. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.